based in New York, and you're fighting these battles internationally. I mean, so yeah, I mean, you touched basically on on you know it hit the nail on the head here. Okay. Um, the 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 Israel's or the West enemies cannot defeat, and they know they cannot defeat us on the battlefield. We are way more advanced than they are. That is why they resort to asymmetric warfare tactics, use children as human shields, play on the fact that democracies adhere to the rule of law and so on, and use that as our Achilles heel. You know, they, you know, Hamas, for example, uses children as human shields, and then there are obviously civilian casualties. The laws of armed conflict are very clear that, you know, the party that intentionally puts civilians in harm's way, in harm's way, is liable for the foreseeable result. Hamas hides rockets and launches rockets from children's schools and then runs to the ICC to try and get a prosecution against Israel um, for war crimes. This is lawfare. I mean, you have so many examples of lawfare in the international arena and international courts, uh, European courts where they have universal jurisdiction. You have a total perversion of the international legal system. You have hundreds or over a hundred resolutions against Israel at the United Nations. You know there's not one General Assembly resolution condemning or defining the crime of terrorism, and that's because the Islamist bloc has lobbied against every single resolution that they attempted to pass because they want an exception. The crime of terrorism is one where you target civilians unless those civilians are uh, of an occupying power, i.e. Americans or Israelis. They want to exempt the killing of Israelis and Americans from the definition of terrorism, and, and that won't fly. You have, you know, the International Court of Justice, the ICJ's advisory opinion in 2004, that attempted to paint Israel's security fence, brick mortar and barbed wire, as a violation of international law. Well, the same court refused to enter into evidence the very relevant fact that the fence contributed to a sharp decline in the loss of human lives, refused to hear the testimony of terror victims. You know, that's not due process, that's lawfare. When you have war crimes charges against Israeli officials in Spain, in Belgium, in Switzerland, you know, in the Netherlands, in Canada, and Israeli officials can't cross international state lines, and yet Hamas and Hezbollah are free to cross European borders with impunity, that's lawfare. Being pro-Israel is being anti-terrorist, being pro-Israel is being pro-human rights of Muslim children. I think that's exactly the point I want to make. And, you know, we spoke about it earlier. You know, a lot of people claim that talking about the theological motivations behind Islamist terrorists is Islamophobic. And so, you know, the question that I ask them, you know, if making a movie and risking my life to highlight the abuse against Palestinian children whose futures are undeniably linked to our future. If that's anti-Muslim, what then is pro-Muslim? I want them to answer that question. They never can. And I think the, on hindsight, the um, brilliance of the film is that it can actually uh, form base consensus amongst people who would otherwise disagree. And so from this base consensus that Muslim children are innocent is the best human rights advocacy because it's true, because truth is the safest ground to stand upon.